Good evening and welcome to the August 5th meeting of the Ames Community School District Board of Directors. I'd like to call the meeting to order and entertain a motion to approve this evening's agenda. I move to approve the agenda. Second. It's been moved by Bankin and um, seconded by Perez. All those in favor of please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. The A's have it. And Director Colton, will you re please read the purpose statement, please? The Ames Community School District commits to equity and access that empowers every individual to reach their full personal and educational potential. Thank you. I will now read our statement regarding public comments, which follow each of the public hearings, information, or discussion items in our public forum. Residents of the district, students attending the district, parents or guardians of students attending the district, and district staff members may address the board about any topic relevant to the district, whether on the current agenda or not. Those who wish to speak must sign in at the beginning of the meeting. Speaker participation is limited to three minutes once per item. <clears throat> the views and opinions of citizens addressing the board do not necessarily reflect those of the board, district administration, or staff. Speakers are to remember that Iowa law prohibits the board from discussing specific employees, students, or their performance. Student speakers will state their name in school, and others will state their name and address. Our first item on the agenda is under public hearings, and I will, at this time, open the public hearing. Our public hearing tonight is regarding the conveyance of real property. Chris, do you want to explain to us? I know we talked about this at our last meeting, but if you want to just give us a brief review. Sure. The city of Ames has uh, requested a permanent electrical easement on the maintenance property out on South Bell. Um, and when it's ever permanent, it becomes a property sale. So we go through the procedures. Okay, thank you. Are there any public comments on this matter? Are there any public comments on this matter? And for one more time, any public comments? Was there any communication that the business office received regarding this matter? There was not. Okay. Seeing no public comments, then I will close the public hearing at this time. The conveyance resolution <clears throat> allows the city to have legal access to the property for repairs and maintenance. A permanent easement is considered a sale of property. I will entertain a motion um, for the resolution. I move that the real property described herein shall be conveyed by this district to the city of Ames for good and valuable consideration. Conveyance by the district shall be by electric facilities easement. The board president and secretary are authorized to sign all conveyance documents for the real property described herein. The board president, secretary, superintendent, and administrative officers to the district are authorized to take all actions necessary to complete the above described transaction, including execution of ancillary documents. Second. Moved by Perez, seconded by Deerdorf. Um, we will take, is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we will vote by roll call. Perez, aye. Bankin, aye. Deardorff, aye. Lou Rosser, aye. Colton, aye. Motion passes five to zero. Okay, onward. Our first discussion item tonight is the item high school shot put and disc, disc filled. And tonight we have to um, give us a presentation regarding that and answer any questions the board may have. Is um, Director of Facilities, Jerry Peters, and Executive Director of Secondary Education, Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. So with the construction of the new high school, as they've started on the southeast portion of the site, um, one of the first things that was um, 
removed was had to do with the shot put in the discus that the high school currently uses uh, as part of the track program. So I've been working with Judge since probably about the beginning of the year to be able to find an alternative location to that. We're looking at, uh, the hopes was to be able to find a place on the final high school project to be able to house the shot put and discus program. Um, but as we got into that, um, defining that um, the western portion of development where the existing building is, we're gonna have uh, the north parking lot, uh, grass practice field, in a second practice field in between the stadium. So part of the challenge with that is to be able to take up uh, or to account for the grades as well as the path back towards the prairie where the greenhouse and the open, uh, the outdoor classroom will be. So when we tried to, to pitch that in, the other option was there was some areas but were challenged um, pretty extremely by the contours that we're gonna end up out there. It's, um, it's kind of easy to look on a flat drawing and it looks flat, but it's hard to imagine what the contours and the shapes are, so that creates uh, a challenge. The, the site's also gonna become a little bit more constricted because uh, we'll have additional parking due to the additional size of the building, and we're actually reducing the number of practice fields from two and three quarters that we used to have, that right now is kind of a part of the excavation, uh, to two practice fields in that area. So. If we were, so we tried to figure out if there was a way that we could um, fit the shot put and discus in there and orient it in such a way. And the, the way we could do that would be to put it over, so they'd be showing, throwing the discus over half of a soccer field, which, and I wish Judge was here, he'd help to be able to explain the, the logistics of juggling shot put program with soccer programs and the boys and the girls and evenings and weekends and nights and so, what happens is that gets his program or those programs in later on into the evening. Um, and during the spring, uh, during that season then, um, when the, the sun hasn't gotten to the full um, azimuth and it gets us longer days, the, the days get shorter or they're shorter at that point in time, they haven't started to extend it. So we tried, we tried to look for alternatives uh, if we kind of pinpointed the high school site and then just kind of circle around and go out from there. Um, I did not consider um, even suggesting, and I might hesitate right now, uh, the prairie, because to me that's just off limits. So that I wouldn't, you know, the thought was there, if somebody had said that, I'd just say no, it wouldn't be worth considering. The next best place or next location was Fellows. Uh, we did talk about uh, potentially trying to put it on this site. There's a, a wedge up north that can, that gets pretty close, gets pretty tight to be able to do that. Uh, the cross country course runs through that and then there's some grading concerns too, as well as um, parking or access to that, not only for the students, then for the spectators. So we uh, kind of took that off the list and so the next best place would be fellows. And as we get farther and farther beyond that, it gets less and less um, reasonable for consideration. So we did look to um, try and find a place on fellows. We looked at a couple different spots and we came up with one idea that seemed to be reasonable and feasible. Um, I think we brought this to the school board earlier this uh, spring and we were asked to go out and um, have a public meeting. So we sent an invite out for, uh, through Infinite Campus and we met um, with uh, whoever would attend. We had about what eight or 10 uh, folks came in um, from the fellows community and uh, we met and explained uh, the thought process and what we considered and um, the kind of laid out a, uh, some cost options and um, I think one comment that I remember was a guy said, well it's not my favorite idea but now that I see that the process and the steps you've gone through to be able to consider this I guess it's about <laughs> What, that's a solution that we can live with. It wasn't the best one, but it's, it's, it's you know, not the worst one, but it's what we were faced with. So uh, as far as, I don't know if I tried to lay out things in the school board uh, agenda form as far as the cost and the options there. So I, I can go ahead and reread that, but uh, I just thought if you guys have reviewed that, if, unless there's specific questions. 
Um, that's what we're doing. So I'd like to be able to come to the school board, the next school board meeting, and request for permission to go ahead and proceed with this in order to be able to get the work completed this fall um, before weather sets in. And then if we get delayed into the winter, then it'll be additional costs for heated concrete and temporary protections. So is there anything else that I've left out? Um, no, I would just echo uh, that the um, neighborhood meeting that was held, uh, I wouldn't say that there was uh, great participation in the meeting, uh, to be transparent about that. Um, there, there were some concerns that were expressed at the meeting, um, mostly regarding um, understanding how the green space would be used, as well as transportation was a major conversation that was held at the meeting. I think the green space concerns were able to be addressed in the meeting, at least I felt as if they were able to be addressed pretty satisfactorily. I think once people saw the plan, they felt fairly confident about how that green space was gonna be used. There still was some concern about what transportation was gonna look like from the high school to, uh, the, to fellows, as well as what transportation was gonna look like on actual track meet days. Um, we committed to uh, that, that community group that we'd be working um, uh, to figure out uh, ways to try to minimize any additional uh, transportation concerns. It sounds like there's some transportation concerns in and of themselves. But yes, I would concur that uh, by the time the meeting concluded, the, the sentiment that we heard from multiple people was, um, while it may not be ideal um, to have this facility, facility located on the school, pro on fellows property. Um, we understand why you're, you're making this as a long-term recommendation. Okay, any, any questions for Director Peters and <clears throat> Executive Director Hawkins? I have a couple questions. Um, in terms of long-term, is this like for the duration of the high school project or is this like a permanent kind of thing? When we looked at evaluating that, uh, I'm going to propose we just do it as a permanent uh, construction. If we do it as, if we try and uh, save a little bit of money up front here and, and try temporary, that doesn't give us a permanent location for it. Uh, also, if we do build something, if, whether we scale it back or cheapen it up, so, so to speak, we'll still have to demolish it and then return it. And that, that was really the one thing that that uh, when I realized that, as far as evaluating the true costs, um, that it would end up, it was really threw us over the threshold of pain as far from a financial perspective. Good point. Uh, my other question is, would this lessen the space for the kids at Fellows, you know, for like recess? And how much, if, if so, I mean, would they still be able to have plenty of room? Yeah. Well. The plan is to throw the discus over the existing field. So the existing field is, is still going to be usable during the school day and the, re the other parts of the season. Uh, the shop put consists of a uh, throwing area that's uh, it's an ag line material. So it's like an infield mix on a baseball or softball field. So that'll be defined. And that's going to be located just to the west of the soft surface playground. So from the, the north wing, there's a hard surface area, and then there's a play structure. And so we'd be just right west of that. So it'll kind of nestle right in, kind of adjacent to that without extending much beyond to the, um, to the south of that south border line. Mm -hmm. But so that'll be the, the ag lime is where the shot put is thrown. And then there'll be a concrete pad. And then there'll be three circles there where they do their, uh, more, you know, they wind up and then they throw it. And then a couple of fences of space uh, to be able to separate the shop put from the discus. And then we want, I'm proposing to build a shed there because they're gonna have some equipment that we'll store. We're not bringing water or electricity to the shed. So we're gonna use translucent panels so that they'll be able to get some light inside um, and to be able to be frugal, but, uh, but realistic. Uh, with that shed, though, I want to have that masonry, and I plan to have it match the brick of the building, because I want it to look purposeful and intentional. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, oh, it doesn't look out of, out of the ordinary. 
beyond that, then there's some higher fences where the, the discus, I call it steel frisbees, but it's the discus area is. There'll be three discus uh, circles. And then beyond that, it's all they need is grass. Mm -hmm. And so it's not gonna eliminate the possibilities of kids being able to play there. There's gonna be some concrete hard surface there as well as the ag line. The kids will be, the elementary students can play in that area too. Um, if we need, if need be, if it'll serve the purpose, we could do some four squares or something <coughs> as far as on the concrete. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities so that we can get multiple use out of that space. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate all the thought you put into this. You're welcome. Jerry, what did staff have to say about this? Was there a concern from, I know I'm a principal, but I mean, when you talked through with staff, was any concerns there? So we talked with uh, Brandon Trouth before he left, and he didn't raise any concerns, or um, I'm not sure how far he took it, uh, you know, through his chain of command or through his organization. Okay. I mean, I do appreciate thinking about outside the box of how to get this done, and fortunately, it is what it is, and I'm supportive of it moving forward. Um, so I make sure that we're, as we are saying, that we're mindful of how it is impacting kids that are fellows too. So I guess I'm unclear whether there is the room at the, once the high school gets completed, will there be room? Because we, we were presented with option one, that the cost, it's a little higher. So I, I just don't know why we're deciding this now. Is there room or not at the high school after completion? The where we, if we were locating it on the high school site, we'd have to be throwing the discus over the soccer field with the parking lot and the two practice fields and then there's stormwater detention areas which are basically a mm -hmm. pond area and the road that runs along you know from from the north side back around the west and over to the stadium uh, with the greenhouse and the outdoor classroom mm -hmm. and that uh, that area out there that in order to be able to shoehorn it into that site into that program we would need to end up uh, throwing the discus over the, the uh, soccer field so that would take off half that soccer field so we tried to fit it in a couple other places the other thing that creates a challenge in that area is just the contours um, you know if you're out on the front of the high school mm -hmm. the current existing high school you're at one level but when you get back around you're one level below that so there's a grade that you don't really see through the building but um, that comes into play and when the building's gone then we don't have a building to, to kind of separate or demark uh, that that grade or the change in elevation, so it, it slopes down. And we really need a flat, uh, straight uh, surface area for the shot put in the discus, mostly the discus. So we really do not have option one. So we were presented with option one, but we don't have that option. Right. What I try to do is consider all the options so we can make an informed decision. And a couple of the options that I didn't put on there was to eliminate the program, the track and field program. I just thought that was, uh, and then the prairie. We didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't want to consider doing that because it's not realistic or reasonable. And so I tried to present the, the options that we could consider and then what the cost impact would be. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about the cost, um, honestly. I think um, I'm disappointed that this is the direction we're heading. Uh, I worry that we're having a feel for a high school be placed at an elementary school where littles play. And it might not affect recess, but it'll affect the after school programs and after school in, in the neighborhood. So I'm kind of curious about who, who, who did we notify of this meeting? Who did we? identify us as stakeholders? We sent out an infinite campus message to the, the fellows community, the mm -hmm. students and parents that attend fellows. And the neighbors around, like, did we notify the neighbors on my? No. Some of the, some of the, um, sorry, some of the folks that showed up at the meeting identified themselves as neighbors, but they may also have been parents. Mm hmm but we were not, we, that we know of, we didn't notify them. Because I think it's important that they, I, I just don't think eight to 10 people in the middle of summer is enough. 
for me to answer. go and make a decision. I guess I struggle with the alternative, though. I, I don't know what else we do um, in the absence. Yeah, we get more feedback, but what's that going to tell us? I, um, it's, it's not my job to, to find space. My job is to um, voice my concern with this decision. I, I don't, this is not, I don't think this is sustainable. There is a lot of space that we're taking away. If we're putting a shed, if we're doing this, I mean, little by little, I, I kind of wonder how many feet is this. Um, I, I, I am concerned about the safety of the children. McKinley, the traffic there, when school lets out, it is, and, and 20th is bad. McKinley is just as bad. Um, so I worry about the safety of the neighborhood. I worry about the safety of the children. It, I, this just, it, I don't, it doesn't seem like, I'm very disappointed. Chair, yeah, we were, the, that was one of the things that uh, most of the, a lot of the discussion at that, uh, the meeting was, had to do with the traffic and the safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the things that judge can do or has the ability to do is to provide additional supervision to make sure that uh, the kids on the uh, fellows, the use of fellows are, aren't going to get in, in, a, in harm's way. Uh, he can implement a walk to practice requirement so that the high school students aren't going to drive a block down mm -hmm. the street in their car. Um, he also talked about, I mean, being able to put some additional fencing or some separation in some sort, whether it's um, uh, stakes and flags or uh, some kind of a barricade all the way up to a permanent fence. Mm -hmm. uh, he also, so we understand the concern. We're, you know, we're aware of and understood it and judges has methods of, and uh, had responses to be able to help to address those and to alleviate that. Because we're all concerned about mm -hmm. safety. I mean, if a little, <laughs> we're all concerned about safety and, and understand that. So with a little bit of effort, mm -hmm. I think we can accomplish that. It, that, that plan also concerns me because I, don't see that as, as a sustainable plan nor an enforceable plan. Um, judge is not going to be there forever. This, we're talking about a permanent field. So I don't, I, I, it just seems, it doesn't seem systemic. It seems it's not sustainable for, to me that we can guarantee that everyone will walk. We can guarantee that. We can, what about meats? I mean, there's that piece too, when people come from out of town, mm -hmm. um, parents. So I, I, those are not, to me, they're, they're well-intended measures, but I don't see them being enforceable and sustainable. Well, I, th I think having a process in place mm -hmm. as far as to manage the kids, that if you have a process, then that's gonna outlive anybody that's, that's in the organization. So to be able to insist, and that's the process, and if we start it, and enforce it right from the beginning, then the students are gonna learn that that's what we do. We walk over there, the coaches will learn they walk over there. Uh, as far as the one advantage with um, the parking that'll be there is that it, it's after school, so the parking lot empties out quite a bit after school, and um, any pickup from the school is gonna be on the, the opposite side of the parking lot, so it's not gonna create congestion right away unless mm -hmm. we, we really fill it up. And as far as the amount of um, attendees to that shot put in discus, it's not exorbitant where it's gonna overflow in the parking lot either, so. Mm -hmm. the, uh, one, some of the things that uh, Judge talked about with the neighborhood meeting uh, to alleviate the day-to-day -day concerns were the use of an indoor facility that the uh, shot and discus throwers have access to now and starting practice in that facility for a warm-up exercise to provide a little bit of time for that parking lot to alleviate as well as the expectation uh, for people to walk over. You're correct, obviously, you can't guarantee mm -hmm. that every single teenager is gonna listen to that expectation, but there's ways to uh, help remind them of those responsibilities. Um, he also reminded the community that was able to show up that night that there's typically between shot and discus about 20 uh, participants that would be making that journey. So it's not as if the track team per mm -hmm. se. So I, I, I again, this is a, a sense, a general sense of the conversation. I felt like 
the, and again, it, you're right, it was a smaller meeting, but I felt like the, the people that were there felt like the day-to-day -day was uh, able to be addressed. Those concerns were able to be handled and addressed somewhat. There was still concern expressed about what happens on track meet days. Jerry, is there physically enough space on the north side of 24th Street? I mean, I know it's not ideal, but is there enough space up here so to accommodate I, both? If I got a map and tried to plop this in there, could I make it fit? Yes. Yeah, yes. good. Okay, so um, really the impediment then is trying to get kids from the high school here, right? Maybe one. Uh, potential parking issues if we're asking people to park in this parking lot and walk north. Um, I guess I, I agree with Jamet. It might be worth exploring to say, okay, what are those roadblocks to not putting it here? My other thought is, have we ever reached out to Iowa State to see if we could somehow acquire through a lease some of that land just west of Furman? It'd be closer to the, to the track. I mean, it's in a flood zone, but I don't know what their likelihood to, we can't buy it, they won't sell it to us, but at least lease that ground. The infill will probably be expensive, so that might be cost prohibitive, but I think exploring the north side of 24th Street here might make sense too. Okay. Yeah. I thought we couldn't build on land we didn't own. Excuse me? I thought we couldn't that's build on land we didn't own. Yes, that's correct. So could we build on land that we would lease? I think you're right. I think, you know, we had yeah, books on Facebook. I think that would cause some concerns. I just have some general questions. So I don't know anything about shot put and discus. I'm thinking of the javelin, but I guess y'all don't do that. We should do that. That's awesome. <laughs> so I guess what my question is, um, you know, I think of all the facilities that we build, and they're marvelous facilities. Um, they are accessible to the community. And so is this the kind of facility that the community would use aside from the track? people who do this particular sport? It, certain be, it would be available. I mean, it won't be restricted or locked up. So it's, mm -hmm. it's gonna be there as far as, um, I think that the challenge would be that they'd have the equipment. So they right. need, you know, the shot ball. That little ball. And it would be there so they could practice, mm -hmm. you know, anybody. I don't, I don't know how I, much. I would answer that question this way. In my many years of being in a high school setting, I've not ever observed someone using that, that type of facility outside of the practice or competition as a high school uh, participant athlete. So I've not seen that happen. Okay. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't be prohibited from doing so. I would add uh, that I uh, was uh, pleased with the plan uh, the aspect of the plan at Fellows that the majority of the green space, that the vast majority of the green space that students use on a regular basis would be preserved, if not enhanced a little bit. Judge talked about um, enhancing that turf um, that's on that uh, property now in order to withstand the discus throw. So um, again, a feeling comment, I felt like the members of that meeting felt like the, the, the green space that was going to be preserved for kids was mm -hmm. a pretty, pretty uh, acceptable mm -hmm. amount of green space f for play. I also wanna, I wanna be sh sure that I'm clear on your positions. Um, from what I'm hearing, this isn't your preference either. This mm -hmm. is not, like if you had best case scenario, you wouldn't have started with this plan. You've kind of, you know, decisioned yourself down to here and, and what you're telling us is from your perspective, this is of all the options and this is, this is what in your judgment is the best, but it wouldn't necessarily be your preference. Is, is that an accurate statement? Yes, okay. very accurate. What would your preference be if you had to- On the high school site right there, next to okay. the track. <laughs> and so, and we're, are we clear that there, that's not an option? So, and I appreciate because I wanted to add to the conversation that, for the question that you asked Director Colton. It is an option if we are willing to balance not having the soccer team report to practice until, and I don't know if those fields are lit or not lit, no, if they're not lit. Okay, so that, that may mean, especially early in the spring, on a given evening, the soccer team does not get to practice mm -hmm. because the track team is going to be throwing onto the soccer field. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that soccer teams and coaches would be too excited about taking away their opportunity to practice. So I, I want to be very clear, because uh, you'd said I was you know, a little confusion there. It's not as if having this facility at the high school is an impossibility. 
But what it does mean is that we're going to have to sacrifice either all teams being able to practice every day or if there's lighting, which would maybe cost prohibitive as well, if there's lighting there, we're certainly going to be sending some student athletes home at nine o'clock at night or later because we have to now balance out who gets to use that field on given timing. Not an impossibility, but yet not a desired result enough that you're hearing it as a recommendation from the administrative team. Thank you. I've reserved my comments because I'm chairing the meeting tonight. <laughs> um, you know, we, we started this conversation, at least my involvement in the conversation was during the public meeting a few, few months. Actually, it was almost two months ago, I think. Um, and, you know, we had a lengthy discussion about boy, and, and I, I know the struggle. You know, we, our preference is to have it at the high school um, and just trying to figure it out and working with the architects and working with a sto story um, construction, you know, how are we going to make this happen? Um, but I am a little disappointed in the fact that we only sent out the email to parents at Fellows and that we didn't actually go through the effort of knocking on neighbor's door, sending out a, a letter. To, to the neighbors in the neighborhood um, to inform them of that meeting. So um, I'm, I was going to com compliment everybody for reaching out to the fellows community because the community isn't just the parents. It's the neighbors that, that live in that area. So let's try to reach out in the next couple of weeks before we get back together to finish this and maybe if we can get some feedback from them, at least the immediate neighbors around there, they would be concerned about the green space. I'd like to see that. Um, also the layout that was shared with the public committee of what's being proposed at fellows. Um, I know there was a um, diagram that was submitted that should be in our packet so the board could have seen it and had a, been able to visualize more of what we're ta talking about. So for our next meeting, if we could include that, that I think that would be helpful. Um, I too had some thoughts at, regarding alternatives. And, um, you know, Director Dierorf and um, through, throughout one of the two that, that, that I've been thinking about, at the north end of this property, there is actually a space that coincidentally is pretty similar to the space that we need for this type of facility. This type of facility is generally a cone shape. Um, the um, shop book gets thrown, let's call it, to the north in that situation, and the discus goes, go, goes to the south. So that's the larger of the cone end. Um, and the north part of this property is a cone. Um, along the east side, you have the railroad tracks and then homes on the, on the west side. Um, we have also um, have an option to put some parking up there, which we had actually talked about reserving a lot of that space up there because I believe it's Aspen uh, Road comes in to that property and would be easily for us to add some parking there. So in addition to having the space for the, this facility, you could also add some parking to it to alleviate not only parking for that purpose, especially during meets, but also um, that's extra parking for when, you know, our baseball life diamonds and our so softball and now tennis um, is, is going to be really utilizing this area pr pretty heavily. So um, I'd like to throw that out as an option and I'd like to get some feedback on that in the next couple of weeks. And lastly, my other thought, and I know it's, at least I haven't been convinced that it's been looked at at the high school campus. And this would be my preference. To the west of the current track, mostly of what I've heard in discussions with the architect and the steering committee is that they've just looked at the current footprint of all we've been talking about and what you were referring to, you're right. It's silly for us to try to have, you know, um, th them share it with the, the soccer team. <laughs> it's not going to work out, um, let alone the coaches are going to be like this all the time, um, let alone the, the players. Um, so, but to the west of our current, on the west end of our current track, there's just a shed there that holds stuff for track. Um, it's just a metal shed, I think. Um, I'd like to see us investigate 
the feasibility of utilizing some of that space there. And we can put that shed just about anywhere. Um, maybe even underneath the visitor's um, you know, stance, you know, in, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so uh, so th those are the other two op alternatives. I think I'd like to see a little more investigation before we um, wrap this up, because I do have concerns about the after-school program that, that we have at, mm -hmm. at Fellow School. And, and, and I, you know, the, the athletic director's intentions are very well reserved. You know, he's going to get somebody to be out there to help watch kids and stuff. But accidents happen. Um, and if we can avoid, mm -hmm. you know, having an accident happen, by making a decision and of locating this facility somewhere else, I think we should at least, you know, look into it. So those are those are my personal thoughts. So, okay. Any other <coughs> comments, questions? But I, I like this yeah. conversation. I think it. I, I think it's a good. Thank you for providing those ideas. Um, I I don't think that way. So I I'm glad you guys, you and Director uh, Deardorff, thought of those ideas. The other one that I just came to mind. Bethesda, I don't know, we were talking about leasing. I don't know if they were, if they have any space, there will be, they're in the neighborhood, maybe, if we could place it at the high school or 24th. Um, and I, I'm happy with getting a direction that we can keep investigating other places. I don't think this needs to be, we need to determine a permanent location right now. I think there's still a lot of investigating to do. Um, so I, I, I'd like us to go that direction. What's your timeline, Jerry? There's a timeline, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, spring will be too late to do the construction. Right. So I'd like to be able to target um, being able to get in. Would start Once we get in to middle of November, then we're going to look into um, heated concrete or uh, winter protections. Um, so if we were able to get it bid, or I mean approved next school board meeting, I need to procure that. Um, and then we would um, uh, need to be able to get somebody lined up to be able to do the work. Uh, so procurement's probably four weeks, which puts us into the beginning of October. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we got to get worked into the schedule, get re-rods and uh, fencing ordered and so on. Uh, I've, on the ag lime area, I want to make sure that we do a subsurface drain so that it doesn't end up becoming a swamp or a pit or a, a mud hole. So there's a little bit extra work in there that I've accounted for. Um, so I think it's you know it's a you know it's going to be a, a four to six week project. So we're pushing right up against that threshold of time in order to be able to get it in this fall. Yeah. So Director Peters, we can't drag this on. The decision for too long, correct? <laughs> I'm ready to go. I know you are. You're, you're always ready to go, Jerry. <laughs> we would love and to that's a good to. thing. That's what we like about you. We so. would love to be able to come next meeting on the 19th with information about what you've requested so that we Great. put you in a position to make a decision. OK. Wonderful. Right. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Are there any public comments regarding the high school shot put disc field? OK. Seeing none, we will move on with our agenda. And yeah, you should have just stayed right up here. Um, <laughs> our, second our second discussion item tonight is the new English courses at Ames High School. And actually, um, I'm excited to hear about this presentation because I know my son um, and a lot of parents, uh, let alone the actual teachers that worked so hard last spring to put this together and they're very excited about it too. So um, I'll, I'll let you get going here. So Great. once again, we have Executive Director of Secondary Education, Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Well, again, thank you for the opportunity to speak with the board. Um, I too am excited to talk with you about these new courses. Um, as you uh, very well know, uh, the board policy 602.1 would call for um, you as a board to approve new courses uh, prior to them being taught to our students. Um, I am apologetic that we are in August and having this conversation for approval, uh, but that is the boat we're in. And so tonight uh, we're beginning the process of the conversation 
to hopefully be able to approve those courses. And I appreciate your comments, Director Rosser. I too have received positive feedback from some parents. Even in my brief tenure here already, I've received some positive feedback about the courses that we're offering our students. So last fall, our curriculum team approached the high school English teachers and asked them to consider uh, broadening the uh, number of courses that students have available to them, expanding offerings, as well as expanding um, our DMAC concurrent enrollment programming. And those English teachers, as you identified, worked really hard throughout the year to do exactly that. In your board packet, I submitted to you um, uh, some outlines of the, uh, did you guys get these? Great. Yep. Um, some outlines of those specific courses with some highlights of which courses are new. Thank you very much. Uh, so those highlighted in yellow there are the courses that are actually new to the process. There's a grade nine version, a grade 10, 11, and 12 version. So you can see that there's quite a number of new offerings for our students to take. Um, descriptions of those new courses are uh, submitted as well below the, the grade level um, organizational tool, if you will, to give a little bit more information about those courses. And so, um, unless you have questions about specific courses, which I would do my best to answer, um, uh, I, I present these to you tonight and ask that you as a board consider um, approving these at an upcoming meeting so that they uh, are officially approved by the board before students take the classes. I would tell you also that currently there are about 1,100, a little over 1,100 high school students signed up for these courses. I just wanted to say I have an incoming freshman and he is so excited about this. We learned about this at the high school night mm -hmm. that we went to and he got really excited. I got excited because some of these areas really interest me too. Yeah, great. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. I think it would be really great if we could see some of these courses at some point filter down to the middle school, uh, particularly the horror literature course, you know, as my <laughs> daughter, just sweet as can be, loves to write these horror stories. I just think it's this so great, so excited. I'm happy for the students um, and thankful to the teachers for putting this together. I appreciate their work as well. Thank you. Do you think this will be a trend? Um, in the past, we had quite a few elective offerings throughout the curriculum through different content areas. And then we kind of went away for a time period where it's like English 9, English 10. Will we see this in other content areas as well? That's a great question. Um, I, I couldn't tell you again in my brief tenure at this time what that philosophical shift uh, in English in particular was grounded in. I, I did hear that same history that you just described, but I don't know what philosophical shift prompted that or what, what beliefs prompted that shift. Um, and so, unfortunately, I apologize, but I, I, uh, I, I don't know that I'm familiar enough with the variety of offerings in other areas to tell you whether a similar shift um, would be appropriate or, or is being considered. What I can tell you is that in the future, uh, one, we will do a really good job of adhering to board policy that dictates both the timeline and process for adding new courses. And that concept of adding new courses will be something that we'll want to talk about through a curriculum review process so that we can be systemic and well aligned through our PK-12 system as to how these courses build upon each other. I'm Thank grateful you. for the teachers that have developed this. I know a lot of work went into this. And I, um, and I think it's a win-win, because the teachers can teach to their strength, and the students can choose what they like. So I think it's a win-win for us, and I'm very grateful. So I hope you can pass that along to them, because this is a ton of work. Um, but it's work that we are, um, it's motivating work, right? So um, I'm grateful for that, and I'm very grateful for the dual enrollment piece. I think that's a great direction, so thank yes. you. I will certainly pass that along, and I would concur when, the, for me, the data speaks for itself. When we have over 1,100 of our approximately 1,400 students choosing courses uh, that are new offerings, that tells me that there's great student interest, and I, and I do understand that uh, our teachers worked with our students to, to gain some, or solicit some input on what kind of courses they would like. So I will most definitely pass that along. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, but like I said, when when I introduced you, you know, I heard some great com comments. You know, the the and, and the understanding, um, and, and actually, you know, some of you have some freshman students this year, this coming year, and I remember that night. Um, that and it's it's hard to, you know, impress some of those old dogs, <laughs> and I was one of those old dogs. So I had a junior for this coming year, and I've had two other daughters graduate already, I was really impressed. I mean, and the teachers were very enthusiastic about talking about the courses and the options that the students were going to have. And, and that, that enthusiasm spread you know, to the parents, as we've seen sitting up here, um, but I saw it that evening um, from parents. Um, and again, not just, you know, fresh from parents, but old dog parents <laughs> who have been through this <laughs> before right. it wasn't their first rodeo. Um, and the, um, so, so that's really good but, uh, that I was very pleased with. And especially the clear, you know, students can really understand this, and parents too, that it, it gives them options in the literature, literature side and the composition side. Mm -hmm. And it's organized in such a way, it's easy to digest, you know, especially when it comes to that critical time, you got to sign up for your classes. And oh, the pressure's on, you got, you know, the, the system goes live, you know, on Monday night, Monday morning, and you got to get in there and get your system, you know, your courses checked or signed up for within a week or so. Um, and for sometimes that's a, for some parents and students for that matter, that's a stressful time. So I, I think this takes some of that stress out of it and makes it a little more understanding. So yeah. I appreciate the work that the teachers I, I put, put into it. I know a lot of them are looking forward to this, this school year um, with, with the materials that, that they're gonna have and the students' energy um, sitting there too. That's gonna be great. So any, any final questions for him? Okay. Thank you for the conversation. Yep, thank you for the information. Yep. Are there any public comments regarding the new English courses at Ames High School? Okay. Okay, moving on to our third discussion item tonight is board committee updates. And are there any board updates? We had a couple things in the minutes, but um, unless you want to points about some highlights, otherwise we can move on. So just two things real quick. So the, um, I'm just sitting here realizing, I think the policy committee met, but I guess nobody took minutes because I don't see any, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we met to um, finalize the committee structure um, policy. Yeah. Um, and I think we were we felt it was ready to bring back for more discussion because I think we decided we didn't want it. I think we were going to bring it for approval um, we felt like we could bring it back, but I think we decided that because um, Director Beerbaum and uh, Director Franson weren't here, we really wanted everyone to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to weigh in on discussion. So we're, I, that will be on the next agenda, I believe. And so if everyone can just know that that's coming and be sure to read through it, because um, I think there's just some more conversation to be had that'll be super helpful. And then the equity committee met on July 26th, oh, it feels like so long ago. It was really nice to be in the room again with all these wonderful people and with Dr. Jones, who is our new uh, equity director. So I can't stop smiling, I'm so excited and happy for you. So the equity committee has moved, um, you know, we have decided, we're, we're changing our structure and so it's unclear. Uh, so I had been serving in the co-chair role, I'll be cycling out of that role. And so I think um, it's unclear who will serve in that uh, co-facilitator role, if it will be Director Cole or Director Franson, I think they're deciding amongst themselves. But I think the equity committee as a whole has decided that uh, it's probably the, a good time for us to transition into being uh, more of a supportive body as Dr. Jones works to clarify his vision for the equity office and um, really um, to, to have the opportunity to crystallize his vision and start putting his vision into place without too many cooks in the kitchen. So we are trying to do what we can to be supportive and so I'm looking forward to this new chapter of uh, working in support to help um, further the mission of equity in our district. Okay. Any questions? Any other comments? On the equity committee? Seeing none, we will move on. Any other committee updates? Okay. Seeing no others, then we will. 
we will move on um, to our public comments. Are there any public comments on board committees? Okay. Now we have nobody signed up, correct, for the public forum, so we will move on to item six, the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion for the consent items. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Moved by Binken, seconded by Colton. <clears throat> All those in, oh, I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> I guess you might want to point out a few things on it before we vote on it. Right, I believe um, JD's got it up on the screen. But the only thing I'll note, it, note is the um, one gift we had tonight from J.C. Penny Cyber Grant of $29.11. Okay. And moved by Binken, seconded by Colton. All those in favor, ind indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Passes nine zero. Okay, we're move on to action items. Our <clears throat> one action item tonight is the approval of bo the board's 2020 legislative priorities as presented. I move the board approve the priorities for the 2020 legislative session. Second. It's been moved by Colton, seconded by Deardorff. Discussion. I made as passionate a plea as I could to have um, full-time preschool be one of the legislative um, priorities that we advocated for. I know that um, you know it's looking at a list of all your favorite things and so hard to choose. And, um, you know, I got outvoted, but I'm going to keep pressing for it. So I know it's not here, but all of the priorities that um, the board has decided they would like to advocate for, I fully support. And, and there's so much need and so many things that are important. Um, I'm fully in support of the list, but I, I would hope that we, as a board and as a community, consider to uh, keep the conversation about full-time preschool very present. Maybe I'll also just take a minute to point out what we're re referring to in these priorities. Our school board, the Ames Community School Board, we're selecting these priorities to be sent to our state association. And in August, um, a committee will get together, um, and which I'm a part of, we will later, later in August, we'll get together and take all of the requests or prioritized uh, <clears throat> resolutions from all of the school districts in the state and look at the, you know, the results. From that, we will then recommend that committee, um, the Legislative Resolutions Committee will recommend to the um, body, the Iowa Association of School Boards Assembly that gets together in October. We will then vote on our final what those resolutions will be for our 2020 legislative session that will be working with our legislators and the, and the governor to pass. So just real briefly, let me um, go through, I know they're listed up here, but let me make a couple comments about the, um, the resolutions that we did select as a board. Um, the Iowa, the, the mental health resolution, that is really talking about uh, providing supports, um, efforts to establish comprehensive community health care systems, to offer preventive and treatment services and comprehensive school mental health programs that include in-school access to students, to mental health professionals, and provisions for reimbursement for Medicaid and private insurers. In addition, supports um, incentives for workforce development for mental health professionals in schools. So these are the types of things that we'll be asking our legislators to, to support. <clears throat> the second um, policy for resolution is school funding policy. There's a number of points here. First is to provide sufficient and timely funding to meet the educational goals, equalize public uh, pew 
per pupil funding throughout the state. Um, provides funding mechanism for transportation costs that reduces the pressure on the, our general fund budgets. Those general funds, as many of you know, though that's where we, we get most of our teaching funds to hire teachers to teach our students and to get the books and pay, pay for those um, classroom materials. So the more we can take that pressure off of off that general fund, the better. Um, this also includes um, factors based on changes in demographics, including socioeconomic status, remedial programs, and enrollment challenges that each school district faces. Our next res resolution that we've s supported are, is that in relation to the state supplemental aid. Um, we would really like the legislature and the governor, which actually didn't do too bad of a job last year. I'll have to give them some credit. Um, but we want to make sure that by the end of January 1st, uh, that they have passed their funding levels for our 20, uh, fiscal year 2021. And then one thing they haven't been doing in recent years, and we would like to hold their fire feet to the fire, especially considering the fact it's their law that they passed <laughs> and they don't seem to follow it very well. Um, but it's, it requires that by the end of um, the legislative session that they um, look ahead one year to the fiscal year 2022 and provide um, you know, at least a 14 month prior certification of the school's district's budgets. That way, school districts can, instead of planning one year in advance, which we've been doing for the past several years, um, that gives us two years to look out. And we can do a whole lot better job, whether we're dealing with facilities, whether we're planning for budgets, whether we're negotiating a contract with teachers. If we can look out two years, that that really does help the process. So that's one of the reasons that that is in the, in the in the, in the request. And then lastly, um, I'm going to point out um, kind of an obscure title for this resolution. It's called Expanding Educational Opportunities. And yes, the Iowa Association of School Boards is very supportive of um, supporting flexibility and expanding educational opportunities and choices for students and families. Educational options must remain under the sole authority of local elected school boards charged with representing community interest and accountability. The Iowa Association of School Boards supports efforts including investment in magnet and innovation schools, expansion of flexible programming offerings, and greater partnerships among schools and community organizations. We support, um, or I, Iowa Association of School Boards supports um, the status establishment of public charter schools, um, supports the establishment or use of online public schools and classes, um, supports, also supports the opportunity to continue collaboration between public schools and non-public schools. However, the association opposes the use of additional tax payer funds for the creation of vouchers or educational savings accounts or an increase in tax credits or dedu deductions directed toward non-public schools. We feel strongly that as an association and school board members throughout the state that that's a real threat to public education in, in, in our state. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Any, any further questions regarding these resolutions and um, seeing that? I have a quick yeah. question. So Go do ahead. we anticipate that four will come out of the committee? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, that could, if, depending on what the results are, mm -hmm. um, the committee might add, and this actually happened two, maybe three years ago, we ended up going with five. Okay. Um, so, and also the assembly could, let's say the committee may recommend four, and the assembly when we get together in October, might say, well, we want to highlight something else I see. based on, you know, political wins or a real strong interest in, let's say, four-year-old kindergarten <laughs> um, could rise to, to the top. Okay, you know, thank so you. So it could, it's, it's not over. 
<laughs> we can still on, keep fighting for four-year-old <laughs> kindergarten throughout the state. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, Director Bacon. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. So um, the motion was made by who made it? Bacon. Col Colton. Colton. And Deerdorf, thank you. Made, motion was made by Colton and seconded by Deerdorf. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay? Passes 5 0. Okay. We are on to board and staff items and um, items from the board. I don't really have anything. I just want to, um, I really appreciate the district as it looks today versus I think where we were a year ago or even two years ago. I think that I have seen tremendous change, um, you know, mostly here in the district office, right? But I think in the, in the, um, in the culture of our district. I, I, I can see that people are really trying to build community and connection. And so I wanted to uh, highlight the principals in the park event that's coming up on Thursday. Um, I believe that's the first time this has happened, or at least I've just, maybe I've just never been invited. But I think it's really neat that all the principals would get together and welcome the students and their families in this way. It's really meaningful. Um, and I, I, um, I'm really grateful that the district is making an effort to be more connected to our students. And so I plan to be there and I hope we'll see some, most of you all there too. Okay, I'd just like to um, reiterate actually something that was said actually two, two weeks ago. Um, but I also want to um, reiterate my personal feelings strongly that, um, but also sh continue to share because we've had continued discussions over the past, past two weeks is that the, the district and the board's thoughts and prayers are continue to be with the Rouse family um, regarding um, the, their recent loss. Um, but I'd really like to thank our, our district um, staff who have continued to um, support the family, the things they've done, um, but especially supporting our students um, and, and other staff members that have um, had to work through this difficult time. Um, and mostly I bring this up to is to remind um, whether it's parents, whether it's students to students, um, there are great resources out there. Please ask, please talk to each other. Parents, talk to your kids. Students, talk to your friends. Um, it's very important. Um, and especially after what we've experienced um, this, this past weekend in our country, that's why I'm wearing my orange um, flag here for um, every um, town for gun safety and mothers against gun violence. Um, it's something, all of the things we, we need to keep in mind this weekend. So, so with that, that's all I have. And we'll move on to any items from the staff. Okay. See, one of these times you guys gotta, you know, jump in. There, isn't there a, a <laughs> microphone laying around over there? Yes. No. Oh, well, okay, Pat, Patrick. Next time, next time. You, you got there, there. There used to be a, a, a microphone sitting over there for for, for the, no, this kind of. They have it. They have ah, it. Ah, there it is. There it is. Jerry was hiding it. Okay. Okay. Then last thing is anything that we need to highlight from the um, board calendar. Anybody see anything on there? I did not, um, Alyssa didn't pass anything on to me. I did touch base with her before she ventured out uh, last week, so. Okay, then seeing none, then our next meeting will be on Monday, August 19th at 6.30 here in the boardroom. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Moved by Perez, seconded by Binken. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those nay, passes 5-0. Thank you and have a good evening.